Richard, as I listen to the theories of how our universe came about, I hear that God may have caused it, and some say that there could be an infinite number of causes and we don't need God. Others talk about the the um, aspects of the laws of physics and quantum theory uh, with very strange kinds of causation, even backwards causation, as being involved in the creation of the universe. So I want to start earlier. I want to start with this concept of causation. Do we really understand what that means? There are different theories of causation around. Um, one very fashionable theory is, is due to Hume. Uh, according to Hume, to say that uh, one event causes another event is to say that the first event belongs to a certain kind of event and the second event belongs to a certain kind of event and if events of the first kind are normally followed by events of the second kind. And so um, if I light a match and apply it to gunpowder and the gunpowder explodes, to say that my lighting the match caused the explosion of the gunpowder is just to say that as a matter of fact, uh, ignitions of matches are applied to gunpowder are followed by explosions, are followed in the sense of always have been, are now, will be. So uh, causation uh, depends on laws of nature, and according to this account, laws of nature are just the regularities of things. Now, you needn't take this particular account of laws of nature, but um, uh, some people w would have a slightly different account. But nevertheless, there is a general view that to say that something causes something else is to say that it exemplifies a, 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 a law of nature. It's a pattern of events. Uh, now, I think this is a mistaken account. I think the notion of causation is a basic one and it cannot be analyzed in terms of anything else. Mm. And my reason for this is that we ourselves cause things and our own causing of things can't be analyzed in this way. Um, there's a distinction between basic actions and non-basic actions. Non-basic action is one which I do by doing a basic action. For example, if I uh, pull a gun at somebody and shoot them, I shoot them by firing a gun at them, I fire the gun at them by pulling a trigger, I pull a trigger by squeezing my finger. Uh, but when you come to the action that I don't do by anything else, that's a basic action, the other's a non-basic action. Now what is it to do a basic action? Uh, well, uh, it's just to do the action. Uh, 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 there's no other way of uh, uh, describing it. Um, you might perhaps say that I do it by trying to do it. And uh, sometimes we do want to say that when it's doing it is a difficult thing. But what is it to try to do something? Uh, what is it to, tr if you're holding my hand down, what is it for me to try to move it? Well, it's to do whatever I believe will make it more likely that my hand will move. Um, and there's no other way to describe it. I don't do one action and hope it will be followed by the motion of my hand. There's no further action which I do. I just do my best to produce that effect. Uh, and therefore, in this case, you cannot analyze causation in terms of a kind of event being followed by another kind of event, because there is no kind of event of the first kind. There is just causing, that's all there is. Um, and, um, or rather, there's cause exercising causal influence, and if you exercise enough of it, then you succeed. Um, so that suggests that causing can't all, always be analyzed in terms of exemplifying a regularity. And if that's right in this case, um, let's see, go back and see if we can't analyze uh, causing in the case in the inanimate world where it does exemplify a laws of nature also in this way. And I think we can. Uh, if we go back to the old way of understanding law, uh, what subsequently came to be called laws of nature. That is to say, in, in ancient and medieval times, people didn't think of laws of nature. They just thought of individual things, such as the earth, 
having certain powers, e.g. to attract objects. And um, therefore they thought of causation as uh, exercised by things, by substances, by the earth. And that makes it more and more similar to when I move my hand, the causation is exemplified by me. The difference is that when I do an action, I exemplify the causation by intentionally uh, trying to bring the effect about. Whereas uh, when the earth attracts um, a stone, uh, the earth has no choice about the matter. The earth has certain powers to attract the stone and a certain liability inevitably to exercise this. So you can't analyze causation in terms of laws of nature, but you can analyze laws of nature in terms of causation. Mm -hmm. Laws of nature just are the reg causal regularities. What are the implications of that in terms of trying to understand the cause of all existence? Uh, some would say that you can analyze causation within the universe, but you can't analyze causation about the universe. Well, people used to say that just because they thought that uh, causation was a matter of exemplifying regularities. And uh, Hume was responsible for this idea. And Kant uh, got it from Hume. And Kant was very keen on this idea. And he therefore said that uh, uh, causation was simply a matter of patterns of phenomena. But once you've got rid of that idea that uh, causation has to exemplify regularities, it's possible that there may be causation which doesn't exemplify regularities. <laughs> Singular causation, as it's called. Uh, and to say that God caused the universe um, is to say that uh, God has certain powers uh, which other things don't have. Uh, and that uh, he chooses to exercise it on a particular occasion, even though uh, he doesn't choose it to exercise it on any other occasion. So the way is open, uh, as it always was open in ancient and medieval times, to postulate a single, singular cause, which d isn't of a kind. Mm 